Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little guy right here, Fetch. This ain't no walk in the park. Uh, this is put out by uh, Ultra Pro, and it's a game designed by Chris Castanetto. And uh, it is basically a game where each player is going to take on the role of a critter that is going around in a park, either a cat, a dog, a mouse, or a squirrel. And they are trying to get three tokens that they are looking for. The squirrel is looking for the acorns. The cat is looking for the balls of yarn. The mouse is looking for the cheese, of course. And the dog's just looking for that bone. So uh, that is what you're trying to do. You're, you're trying to go and get those three tokens that are you're looking for uh, and get back to your home space first. Uh, so let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works. <laughs> So here I have set up for you a four player game of Fetch. This ain't no walk in the park. And as I said before, the goal of the game is for each critter to get their three uh, pieces of things that they want. Uh, for example, the squirrel here wants the three acorns. The cat wants the three balls of yarn. The dog wants the three bones. And the mouse wants the three uh, slices of cheese. And the critters are supposed to go and collect those three items. Once you collect it, you just put it in front of you and then make it back to your home square. And the first person to do that is the winner. So it's really not that difficult of a concept and it's not that difficult of a game either. The sequence of play is first of all, you're going to roll this eight sided die. And then that's going to tell you which row or column you're going to be able to either shift or rotate. So for example, uh, starting with the, I rolled an eight. So the columns and rows are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can either rotate or shift this column or this row. So let's say I'm the squirrel. I'm trying to get over here first. It's the closest one to get this acorn. Uh, so I wanna kinda not mess with anything here. So I'm just going to shift this column right here. Actually, you know what? I won't shift it, I'm gonna rotate it. And so we'll rotate this way and this way. You can rotate one direction, one part of the uh, what one click, so to speak. I'll just say it that way. So I've rotated that column. And then the second thing I can do is I have the option to rotate any one tile on the board. Uh, after that, I'm going to be able to move. So the reason you want to be careful is because uh, you can move to any tile if there is an arrow pointing to it. So for example, my home tile here, I'll be able to move here. And then from here, I'll be able to move to here, here, or here because there are arrows. But if I were here, I would not be able to move from this one to this one because there's no arrow pointing to it. So you may want to, from time to time, uh, rotate a specific tile on the board and you have the option to do that on the second part of your turn. Right now, I'm not gonna choose to do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and go on to my movement, which you can move two spaces. So I can follow that arrow and go here, and I can follow this arrow and go here, and that's the end of my turn. Then Mr. Cat over here will roll the die, and he also rolled an eight. So again, we can uh, uh, shift or rotate this column or this row down here. I think we're gonna rotate this column because uh, there's a specific reason here. I want to be able to move that way because I want to go over there and get that ball of yarn. So we're going to rotate all of these guys like so. And then I can rotate another single uh, square on the board anywhere. I'm going to choose not to do that because I'm pretty well set up right now. And then we move one, two, and that's it for there. And then we go to the dog's turn and he's going to roll and he rolls a one. So he can uh, do this column or that row. Eh, let's see here. Well, we will be able to keep the squirrel a little bit further away from that. So we're going to do that. We're gonna push this one and shift all of these guys over. So now that squirrel is one space further away from its destination. And now we're going to rotate, and I don't think, 
Yeah, we do. Let's go ahead and do this right here. We're going to rotate that square. And then we're going to move one and two. Then the mouse is going to go, and they can do four. So it's one, two, three, four, or four. All right. Well, here we're going to be able to help the dog and hurt the cat or um, hurt both of them. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, we're going to shift this right here, like so. And that comes over like this. And now the mouse wants to get over here to this piece of cheese. And we're going to rotate this one square. So we can go one and then two and then be set up to move again there. Now, this is how the game continues until, as I said earlier, uh, each uh, one person gets all three of their items and then returns back to their home space. Uh, to get an item, whenever you land, let's say that the dog here was able to land here, he automatically just simply takes it and puts it in front of himself. And then he can go about trying to get to the next one. Once he has all three, he has to make it back to his square, his uh, doghouse over there. And if he's the first person to do that, he wins. And that's how you play Fetch. So that's about it for Fetch. This ain't no walk in the park. And, you know, I have to agree with that statement. It was not a walk in the park. It wasn't very fun. It wasn't very enjoyable. And, um, quite frankly, I would rather take a walk in the park than play this game. Now, that's not to say that it is a horrible game. But I do have to say that I did try to play this game with my seven, going to be eight-year-old son. And his words were, and I quote, This is boring. My daughter, who is also 14 was not too enthused. I had to continually tell her to uh, uh, get off of her phone, get off of her device, hey, wake up, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, and my wife also was very impatient with the game as well. Uh, so uh, I, I know that that's rather foreboding, I guess you could say. So I apologize for that. But I, I just there aren't a whole lot of redeeming qualities about this game, unfortunately. Uh, I thought that my family was going to enjoy it after having read the rules. And I thought it was going to be fun for, especially, especially for the kids. Uh, usually Aiden likes this kind of game where uh, it's uh, moving around and that type of stuff. But I just don't think there was a whole lot of um, uh, goodness there. So let's go ahead and get to some pros and cons for the game. The first pro is quite simply that it is a small, cute game that is uh, probably highly mobile, uh, doesn't take a huge area to play the game on. Uh, it's a very small, compact game, so there is that. It does have some uh, versatility in that respect. I think you can take it to a number of different kinds of venues and be able to play the game well. Um, and it does have a little bit of an eye-catching pop to it. it it's not... Uh, the graphic design isn't great by any stretch of the means, but it does look interesting just at first glance. So uh, there is that. Um, but unfortunately, that's about all uh, the good thing that I can say about this game because um, everything else about the game was pretty much uh, disliked by the people I played it with. Um, first of all, uh, rolling a die to determine which row you can um, uh, shift or rotate is more frustrating than you can possibly imagine. Uh, because more often than not, you will not roll the row or column that you want to shift or rotate, which means that you're simply just going to have to, more often than not, hurt somebody else rather than help yourself. And I don't really like it when games do that. They force you to mess around with other people's plans rather than encouraging you to come up with your own best, most efficient plan. Um, this one is trying to do both at the same time and that die roll just doesn't help uh, reach that goal at all. Uh, maybe the designers thought it was going to be too easy if you could just pick what row or column uh, you rotate or shift. And I can see that. 
Uh, but again, this isn't a heavy strategy-based game. This is just a light filler. So what's wrong with it being easy? If everybody's doing it, you're still going to have uh, those times where people mess up other people, but it's a natural thing. It's not a random thing. The second con has to do with the first. Because that uh, random roll is something that you can't plan ahead for, uh, you, you have to roll the die and then look at the board to see which one you want to do. Um, additionally, why is it an eight-sided die and not a four-sided die? That I didn't understand either. Or maybe it could have been two four-sided dice and you roll them and you can assign one to a row and one to a column. And then when the two intersect, that's the tile that you can, I don't know. Uh, we just did not like having to roll that eight-sided die uh, because it was just so random and it rarely turned out to where we were able to manipulate the row or column that we needed to manipulate. Uh, so because of all of that, the second con is this. There's a lot of downtime in the game. Um, it was the, the point uh, in one of the games where my wife was just saying, come on. And she she usually doesn't do that. She's usually the one that takes a little bit more time on her turn than the rest of us do. So that kind of tells me something, that this game just simply takes a little bit longer to play than, than normal. Um, as far as uh, anything else bad to say, I, I wasn't a real fan of the artwork. And usually that's something that I really want to try to harp on. And uh, that's one of the things that really makes a game pop for me. And if I don't like the artwork, um, it's not that I will dislike the game, but I have less involvement in the game. I, I feel like I'm I'm less invested in the game. So all in all, this was not um, this was not a, a very big hit for me or my family. And it was. Uh, which is unfortunate because I think that's where this game is supposed to be landing. It's supposed to be landing in the family game genre. And my family just did not like to this uh, at all. So uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give it probably a little bit lower. This is probably around a 4 out of 10 for me. Um, it's it's just not something I'm going to want to play again. And with Aiden, he was the one that I was really kind of hoping him and my daughter, Catherine. I was hoping they would kind of like the game. And both of them really did not. So that is all I can say for Fetch, 4 out of 10 from me. I apologize, but just didn't do it for me. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the flip side.